And what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It is your boy, Chief Ludes. And you know what time it is. It is time to count down the top 10 cards under 100K MT in NBA 2K22, my team. Look, you know the drill. Four honorable mentions, then we get to the top 10. So let's start with the honorable mentions. Number one is a card that I'm spotlighting, not because he's really that great, but because he can get badged up versions for very, very cheap. And that is Penny Hardaway. Now, I do do these lists every week, or at least I try to. Last week, I didn't do the best cards under 10K because I felt like there was really no market change. But there's been a few guys added the last week or so that I wanted to spotlight. Sorry, I should have said that probably before I did Penny Hardaway, the honorable mention, because I didn't discuss this card at all. But either way, Penny Hardaway is good. You can get badged up versions for relatively cheap with unlimited contracts, unlimited shoes and stuff. He's still like a good point guard in regards to attacking the rim. Uh, he's six foot seven, so he can still contest pretty well. And he can guard like small forwards and stuff decent. Um, if you want to switch on your small forward under the point guard or whatever. He's pretty good. I've talked about this card for like literal months at this point, so I don't feel like talking too much about him, but he's fun. Next up is another familiar face out here, and that is not Dean Wade. Dwayne Wade. Now, I've kind of changed my tune on Dwayne Wade a little bit. When I say that, I mean, like, I actually think it's a better idea to grab the NBA 75 version uh, just because you can add whatever badges you want to him and, you know, give him a plus three, plus four shoe. And I think it's totally fine. Like an 82, 83 three pointer is fine with Dwayne Wade base. It is. He's still one of the best rim attacking point guards. He still plays pretty lockdown defense. You know, obviously his release is really good. Respect to Dwayne Wade, man. I do feel like he's one of the more disrespected NBA, like, you know, superstars we've had in a long period of time. I feel like people don't give him his flowers, you know? And I mean, I do kind of respect the fact that, like, Gabrielle Union came out and said that he likes to have his salad tossed, and, like, he's totally cool with that. Like, and I'm not even joking when I say I totally respect that. Like, that's, that takes a man to admit respect, respect Dwayne Wade for that. He's a really good card, though. He's probably worth that price. Next up, we got <clears throat> the Big Diesel. Excuse me if I'm not overly ecstatic during this video. I just actually recorded this uh, while I was live on Twitch. You know, go check out the Twitch. But uh, yeah, it just uh, my frames drop so bad I have to re-record it now, which is frustrating. Anyways, <clears throat> Shaq Diesel is the opposite. I would say without a doubt, go grab the Evo one uh, just because that that mid range shot at 90 is really, really helpful. Like you're not cracking threes with Shaq, but he's still the most dominant interior player in the game, in my opinion. Um, I would say most of people's opinions as well. Like in B, it's pretty good. Cat's kind of good on the interior, but Shaq is really, really nasty. I mean, he booms on everybody. He's a massive. Like, if that's the kind of center you're looking for, I mean, Shaq Diesel's the guy that you want to go grab. Uh, he's got half brick wall. He sets, I would say, the second most effective screens in the game. I do personally think a bead sets the most effective screens in the entire game. I don't know what's up with that, but you cannot get around that dude. Shaq's good though. Next up, it kind of feels disrespectful to even have this guy as low as I do, and that's Tracy McGrady. The reason I want to spotlight him is just because this is the first time he's ever really been this cheap. Um, I don't think it's really worth picking him up because I think there's guys that are better at the position he plays that are A, cheaper and better. Uh, so, But it's still cool that T-Mac is available for this price. He's still a fun card to use, though. Don't get me wrong. Trey Burke base, I mean, six foot eight. You know, he dunks on people. He shoots really well. You know, he's got gold limitless and stuff. Uh, you can give him clamps and stuff like that as well. He's still like a pretty dominant card. T-Mac holds value for a long period of time because he's usable for a long period of time. So and now let's get on to the actual list. Number 10. Come on. You know who it was good? Jeremy Lin, dog. Jeremy Lin is just auctionable pink diamond Gary Payton, but slightly better offensively. Like that's that's what he is. Not a holographic Jeremy Lin. I'm not going to pay 84000 for that, but I will consider it. You can get Jeremy Lin for like 15K MT or less. His jump shot, some people don't like it. I personally really enjoy it. Um, he doesn't come standard with limitless spot up, but he does have gold chef. So I think that's pretty good. He moves really well. He dunks. He does do a lot of flashy dunks, though. I will say that, which is annoying because they do tend to get blocked pretty often. But Jeremy Lin, I think, is a really, really good card. And if you're looking for help at the point guard position and you don't want to spend a bunch of MT, you could do a lot worse than using Jeremy Lin. He's really good. The jump shot's not as bad as people say. I'll be the first to say that. Number nine, card that we just got yesterday, Marcus Aldridge. He's cheap. Don't be shocked to see him on the budget card list tomorrow. Like foreshadowing uh, LaMarcus Aldridge is good though <clears throat> he's going to do a few things and these are the things he's going to do basically 
He's going to be big for no reason whatsoever. He's going to block some shots, rebound. You can bang with him on the interior, and he's going to be able to shoot from the corners. Like, that's what he does. Uh, he does have, I think, gold limitless spot up, which is very effective with Brooke Lopez base, which they changed his release from Stoudemire to Brooke Lopez. So, you know, he's good. I mean, he's not the greatest big man in the world, but if you're looking for, like, a very competent, like, stretch big man to pick up, he's essentially, like, I don't want to say he's slightly better Abaka because he's not, but he's like comp- comparable to what Abaka brings you. But instead of being as good defensively, he's a little bit better on the interior. I think he's really, really good for next gen. He's decent on current gen too. Number eight is what I can only describe as the perfect bench shooting guard. Joe Iso Joe Johnson. I don't think I don't think it's Joe Iso Joe Johnson. I think it's probably just Iso Joe Johnson, but whatever. It is what it is. Joe Johnson's fire like you can get badged up unlimited contract unlimited shoot up versions for relatively cheap and I still think he's really really good as a bench shooting guard he does have like horrific stamina which is the reason I say he's really good as a bench shooting guard and he is a little bit on the expensive side but I think he is worth that his release same one as Dolph Shays and forgot who else has it but somebody else has it that I like a lot and I'm gonna go check that out i don't know who it is though it's base 38 i know that i just don't know who the other person is that has it um let me let me see because i'm actually very curious he has it on quick though so it's a very good three hunting release uh who else has base 38 bob sura yeah that's it bob sura is on normal though but my man joe johnson can hoop and if you're looking for a bench shooting guard you could do so much worse number seven lamar odom He's a budget card as well, but he deserves to be on this list because that's just how good this card is. Like, Lamar Odom is a perfect stretch four or a stretch three. He does it both. I mean, I guess a three is not really a stretch three because at the same time, most threes kind of stretch the floor. But Lamar Odom can dribble the ball. He can be your point forward. He can shoot. He's got the Paul George release. There's really nothing wrong with this card at all. And you can get him for like 10 KMT. Like, he is so good for that price. Truly. The only reason he's so far down this list is because there's so many good cards available for under 100k. Number six is Wang. Who doesn't like Wang? Truly. And yes, I'm aware of what I just said. Wang's good. Uh, The only reason he's really far down this list is just because there's another center that's infinitely more annoying. um, That is actually cheaper than him. He's good, though. I mean, he's got a massive player build seven feet tall catch and shoot corner specialist good release he does have like Hoff intimidator he can lock down the post too which on next gen i think is very very important because if you're trying to avoid getting paint smashed by like yao ming wang zz is a very good uh cheap alternative to that like Kristaps doesn't set effective screens because of his tiny little player build but wang has girth so he will set screens at an effective rate too and he shoots well Number five, Kawhi Leonard. I mean, Kawhi Leonard's Kawhi Leonard. You know what you're getting at. You don't really need to get the NBA 75 version, but I would look and see if you can get maybe a badged up one or one with an unlimited contract or an unlimited shoe. Um, honestly, the Tis the Season one is just fine. Like, he's got pretty much everything you realistically need. He is a 3 and D cone, and if you use him as a 3 and D cone, you're going to be happy with the results. That's just it. If you try to use him as something he's not, maybe you won't, but he is truly one of the best defensive cards in this game. I still look forever for, for like Scotty Pippen, but that's a Bulls fan bias, so it is what it is. Number four is another very cheap new card, Richard Lewis. Whereas Lamar Odom is more of a kind of rim attacking and dribbling, like ball handling, kind of like combo forward. Rashard Lewis is a pure 3 and D cone one. And if that's more what you're looking for, Rashard Lewis is fire. Like base four is a really good release. You know, he's got a great stable of shooting badges. He even has like some decent defensive badges with like, you know, gold interceptor, gold clamps, etc. He's just a very good card and he can dribble a little bit too. You know, he's got like tight handles on pluckable. Like he's good. Great hot zones. This card is like 9,000 MT and he's worth every single piece of MT that you spend on him for sure. Number three is another combo forward. There's a lot of combo forwards on this list. I know shocking. I almost picked up by, I almost said Bargiani, but it is Andre Karolinko. 
Karolinko, I'm not going to go into too much detail as far as, you know, what he's about and what he gets down on. But Karolinko is fire, and that is what it is. Like, this one has 13 Hoth badges. Anything of note here? Not really, but still good. Karolinko has base 98, which I think is a little bit overblown this year. It's not quite as, like, overpowered as it has been in the past, but he plays lockdown defense. He's one of the better defensive wings in this game. He's got a great release off the catch and shoot and off the dribble. He dunks really hard. He can lock down any single player you put on him. He's fantastic. There's a reason everybody uses him. Number two, I hate this card with a burning passion. With the fire of a thousand suns, I hate Kristaps. Every time I run into Kristaps, I have a terrible time. If real life Kristaps was even 10% as good as he is in 2K, he would be like one of the most dominant bigs in, in the game, period. Like in the real life NBA game. He's still good. I mean, obviously he's going to stroke from outside. He's going to dunk on people. He's going to block shots and contest like everything because he's huge for no reason. He's just not going to handle the ball, but he truly is one of the best centers in this game. Like if you're looking to pick up a game-changing center, you could do so much worse than poisoning is truly. And number one, you already know, my boy is coming through. Terry Dissinger, I finally took the plunge. Shout out to my chat on Twitch. I appreciate you guys for finally convincing me to pick up Terry Dissinger. I know I, I put it off for so long because I'm cheap and I don't want to spend MT, but I picked up an 11 Hoff Terry Dissinger for 85K, I think is what it was. Um, and uh, I regret nothing, truly. Uh, he had, yeah, it looks like he had bullet passer added to him. I guess that's pretty cool. I had rhythm shooter. I guess it's not the coolest badges in the world, but it's it's still fine. He's really, really good. Like truly, he's really good. I I know I've said it for a while. Everyone kind of knows how good Terry is, but he's the best card you can buy for under 100K, and it's not even close. You could say Kawhi is up there too. And if you're looking for more of a three and D guy, then yeah, I would say that that's not completely inaccurate, but. Terry is so monumentally game-changing that when you pick him up, you won't even be upset you just spent 80k MT. I promise. That's literally it. Rudy Base is fantastic. Most of them have badge additions and uh, shoe additions and contracts, etc. So it's a good investment. Anyways, it's been your boy Cheap Ludes. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching my videos, period. Drop a like on this one. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll be back with more content later. Have a great night. I uh, wish you well. Be safe. Peace.